Good morning, church. What a beautiful wintry morning. I want to share scripture with you today that comes from the 19th chapter of Matthew. Please open your hearts and receive the word of the Lord. Someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me what is good, Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones, the man asked. And Jesus replied, you must not murder, you must not commit adultery, you must not steal, you must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. I've obeyed all these commandments, the young man replied. What else must I do? And Jesus told him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. May God bless his word to our hearts this day. Well, good morning, church. I went out very, very early this morning to scoop snow, the driveway and the sidewalk around our house and and all of that. Uh, My tradition of just getting up early to get the the chores done. And as I was outside, I was praying that somebody would show up this morning because I was pretty sure I could get to church, but if somebody didn't show up that could turn on the audio-visual and play the video or sing the songs, I was going to be in trouble. And I am so grateful and so thankful for the praise team and for the staff that, that has made it here to share worship with you. I also was reminded this morning in the cold, crisp air as I was scooping the, the snow of days gone by, a long time ago when it was our tradition, when we were on the farm, Dad and I and my brother Kent would get up and we'd go out and we'd do chores in the cold of the morning, making sure the livestock was fed, scooping the snow out of the bunks and and feeding the warm silage and watching the cattle come and, and the joy of that time gone by. And I was thinking this morning of all my friends who are ranchers and farmers, who in the midst of this beauty of this snow causes so much work. And I said a prayer for you all that God would bless you. And as I walked in the house, I was greeted this morning by the smell of sausage and eggs. My wife had gotten up and she was making making me breakfast just like it was so many years ago. And so I come this morning with a joy in my heart over the beauty of the snow, but I understand how difficult it is because it's only October, for goodness sakes. Well, today as we open our hearts again for our Loving Generously series, we begin, as we remember last week, we looked at a message called The Banquet. Do you remember? Frank and Cassie Donovan were supporters of the soup kitchen. Ray had introduced them to what it means to live generously, and they were big supporters of the soup kitchen, not only by financially, but their hands as well. And this last week, we saw them throwing a banquet inviting all of their wealthy friends to come and and give a donation to help the soup kitchen. But if you remember in last week's video, they also invited the guests of the soup kitchen. And it didn't go very well. The very wealthy looked at the guests who were poor, not well-dressed, and they didn't receive them very well. The message last week was all about who do we invite into our lives. And we saw Frank and Cassie as they were challenged 
to build meaningful relationships in their lives. As we continue today, would you pray with me? Lord, we open our hearts this morning to Jesus' words to the rich young man. We pray, Lord, that the Scripture will fill our hearts. We pray your Holy Spirit will open our eyes. We pray that we'll see Jesus this day. Lord, I pray that the words that I share, the video that we'll see, will be lifted up with honor and with glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue today with the Donovan family, and our video is entitled, For Sale. I didn't realize how long it had been since we'd used this room. We'll get the cleaners to come by tomorrow. No, please don't do that. I can clean and it. And we'll get some new furniture this weekend, as long as you don't mind using the little bed until then. Oh, please, that's great. Honestly, I'd really rather you didn't buy new furniture just for me. Well, at least let me look around the house and find some stuff that we're not using. I know it's only temporary, but I want it to feel like home. Sure. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Come on. It'll be fun. No, Ray, you're not addressing the ball properly. How exactly should I address it? Your Majesty? Flattery never hurts. <laughs> if you're serious about learning this game, I would not be listening to this man. Hey! Ray, this is Mark Silva. Mark and his wife were some of our first friends here at the club. Oh, nice to meet you. Yeah, that was crazy last night, wasn't it? We thought the club had double booked the room or something. Yeah, it was a little hectic at first, but I thought it turned out great. Did you meet anybody interesting? <laughs> yeah. If you can't go to the circus, just bring the circus to you, right? That was a little awkward. Maybe he just needs a little help uh, learning a new stroke. In the meantime, we should really try to get all the circus clowns back together again sometime. <laughs> Okay, that was all sand, right? Okay. It's a start. I didn't realize I was checking into the Hilton. Please. I could make a pile ten times this size just with stuff we haven't used in years. <laughs> you know that verse that says if you want to be perfect, sell everything and give it to the poor? Some days that sounds so perfect to me. Well, thank you for letting me use some of it for a little while. Hey, what's this? That, my dear, is exactly what I'm talking about. That's a watch winder. A what? A watch winder. You put your watch in there and it keeps it wound. Isn't that what a battery's for? Not if you have a fancy watch that doesn't use a battery. Then you have to wind it manually. So, so this is... To keep you from winding it manually. <laughs> well, I don't think I'll be needing that. <laughs> Trust me, neither do we. <laughs> What is it that they say, the stuff you own ends up owning you? Hopefully we're a little better about how we spend our money. Our time, on the other hand. Hey, Mom, I'm going over to Drew's. Hey, Evan, I want you to meet, oh. <laughs> you know, in my neighborhood, if we have stuff we don't need, we just have a yard sale. That sounds like fun. Yeah, imagine how that would go over with the neighbors. Hey, have you seen Evan? Oh, hey, Julia. Hi. Oh, wow, I forgot about all this stuff down here. Hey. Hey. You know how we're always talking about simplifying? Yeah? Julia just had a really interesting idea. Hey, buddy, what you got there? Hey, how much is that? Uh, let me see, it says 75. But I don't know how to get it out of here. Would you do 30? Also, the monkey comes off if you don't need a lamp or. If you need more? You got a pair. Oh, yes, that looks nice.
Well, I guess Victoria's not in the shopping mood. Well, look who's having another party. Hey. 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 What's going on here? A yard sale. We're trying to downsize a little. Huh. You're welcome to take a look around. We can cut you a special deal. <laughs> Are those some of the same people from the soup kitchen again? Yeah. Oh, you mean the circus? Allison, hey, guy. Hey, you want to meet Julia? Sure. Oh, sweetie. <laughs> I don't think that's such a good idea. I mean, they have company. Are you sure you guys don't want to stay for a while? Oh. Uh, well, we do need to get together, but maybe when things aren't as crazy for you guys. So, uh, hey, good luck with your yard sale. Okay, this is the last of it right here. Oh, Frank, uh, you didn't sell all your possessions, but it's a start. Good. Give it to the soup kitchen. Hey, Mom. What do you want me to do with this? Oh, please don't tell me that didn't sell. No. <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey, so my mom says you got kicked out of your apartment or something? Megan. No, it's okay. Uh, it wasn't really my apartment. What do you mean? I made some really bad choices when I was your age. And... Then I, I made some worse choices to deal with my earlier mistakes. Um, there was a man who said if I worked for him and did what he asked me to do, he would give me a place to stay and take care of me. So why'd he kick you out? Because I met the most wonderful man in the world. <laughs> Thomas over there, he helped me find a way out from doing what I was doing. He, it didn't make this other man very happy. He says I owe him a lot of money and he's getting aggressive. So your parents gave me a place to live so he can't keep bothering me. I'm really sorry. Thank you. As much as soup kitchen appreciates it, I think we're going to have to turn down this particular donation. Looks we'll say we're going to have to find some other use for those funds. Thomas, can I talk to you for a second? Perfect day, Frank. Perfect day. Our video helps bring to life Jesus' call to love generously. The question in our scripture today that the young rich man asked Jesus was, what good things must I do to have eternal life? Interesting question, isn't it? The rich young man knew there was something more to life, something beyond this life, but he didn't understand. He wants to do something to gain eternal life. He's just not sure what. It's a simple question. Perhaps many of us have asked that question. What must I do to have God love me. Have I done enough? Am I a good enough person to gain God's favor? Well, Jesus uses that question, and he challenges the rich young man to keep God's commandments. The commandments Jesus challenges the rich young man to keep all have to do with how we treat one another. The commandments were do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not testify falsely, honor your father and mother, love your neighbor as yourself. It leads us to that, that often asks questions, 
How are we treating one another today? Well, if you're on social media, if you watch the news, if you watch the talking heads on TV, we're not doing very well, are we? The rich young man said, I've obeyed all these commandments. What else must I do? I'm reminded when our children were little, they would come and, and say, I'm bored. What is there to do? Now, maybe that never happens to you, but it happened to us all the time. And as soon as they're given options to do many other things, they realize they don't like any of those options. Children may have a toy box filled with toys and all kinds of, of things to entertain them, but they've lost interest and they want something new. So it was with a rich young man. The rich young man was looking for a new direction in his life. He has more stuff than he needs. But he's grown tired of what the world has to offer. But he's unwilling to give it up to gain even more. Jesus said, if you want to be perfect, if you want to go to heaven, go and sell all you have and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. What an offer. So simple. Divest yourself of all your stuff. Set yourself free from the pull of the world and follow me. Well, the rich young man had an invitation to become maybe the 13th disciple. Just as Jesus called the 12, he called 12 saying, come and follow me. And the 12 left everything to follow Jesus. But the scripture said, when the young man heard this, he went sadly away because he had many possessions. So the question is asked, what is the real cost of following Jesus? Does God really expect us to sell everything? Does God expect us to move to the mission field, to give up our family, our friends, our lives? Is that what God is asking? No, it isn't. But God does expect us to look at the things of the world and decide what things we should possess and what things own us. I am reminded of what Deb and I call the great moving sale. It was spring of 2004. We were entering the ministry. We were going to move from Millbank to Laramore, North Dakota, from a big, beautiful new house in Millbank to a little tiny old parsonage in Laramore, North Dakota. So we decided to have a moving sale. And so we went and we emptied the storage shed. Now, how many of you have a storage shed? How many of you even know what's in the storage shed? How many of you have more than one storage shed? Well, Deb and I divested ourselves of anything and everything that we didn't think we needed. We sold or, or gave away all of our extra stuff. And the truck came and loaded us up, and uh, I remember the driver saying, wow, you don't have much stuff. In this big semi-trailer, we filled the first little bit of the truck. 
When we got the weight, he said, you have about 10 or 11,000 pounds of stuff. He said, that's the lowest number I've ever seen from a pastor. He said, most people have a minimum of 15 to 30,000 pounds of stuff. And Deb and I realized how much stuff is enough. Does the stuff that we collect get in the way of our living for Jesus? That's the question that Frank and Cassie were faced with. Cassie wants to go out and buy new furniture for Julia to live in their guest house. Cassie was caught in that consumerism of the world. We must have new the best until Julia brought her back to reality. She said, I don't need new furniture. Has there been a time in your life when you were on the edge of life? When you weren't sure where your next meal may come from? A time when you were on the edge of, of poverty? A time when you were no longer in control? Or perhaps you've been on a, a mission trip where you lived with the people on the edge for a period of time. I was reminded of Kisumu, Kenya and the Agape Orphanage for street boys. We spent 10 days or two weeks there. We ate with the boys every day and it was at best a little bit of rice and maybe beans and a, a scrap of fatty meat or something thrown in. Meal after meal after meal after meal. That was their life. And I remember getting on the airplane and we flew into Amsterdam on the way home to the States. And our whole group got off the airplane and as we walked down the uh, ramp there, we saw the golden arches of McDonald's. And we didn't walk, we ran to McDonald's to get some greasy hamburgers and, and food we hadn't had for so long. We had become so accustomed to the Western way of life. Oh, how we appreciated what we had. When we empty our lives of the clutter, we begin to see God more clearly. I have stood at the bedside of wealthy, wealthy people as they have died. Not a one of them talked about the things that they had. They talked about the things that were to come. Death is a great equalizer, isn't it? For we all pass through death and we'd leave behind anything that we think might be ours to give it up for what God promises through Jesus Christ, eternal life. Frank and Cassie are on a journey to love generously. They realize that their lives are filled with all the things that cause them not to see others with the eyes of Christ. So they decide to have a yard sale. How many of you have had a yard sale? That's the worst experience ever. Unless you're Delane Rains or, or Bobby Trey. They love rummage sales. They had a phenomenal rummage sale here at the church. And I couldn't believe how much stuff people had that they just wanted to get rid of. But that yard sale didn't set well with the rich neighbors. And Frank and Kathy begin to ref Cassie reflect upon how their lives are changing. They were once the very wealthy who had no time for those on the edge of life. In verse 23, Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is very hard 
for a rich person to get into the kingdom of heaven. I say it again, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Well, come on. I am not rich. Certainly I'm not rich. But if you have a roof over your head and food on your table, you're richer than a majority of the people of the world. If you have money in the bank, you are richer than 80% of the world's population. Am I rich? I am rich beyond compare. It's a matter of the heart, isn't it? I hope and I pray that I am rich in the treasures of heaven, the treasures that Jesus Christ brings, and not in the materials of the world. And it's here that Jesus calls us to examine our lives and to ask the hard question, how much stuff do I own? But even more important, how much of that stuff owns me? What clutter in my life do I need to get rid of? Is there something in my life that causes me to miss the blessings of Jesus? Am I like the rich young man? We must then ask, what things do I possess that I can be a blessing to others? What things do I have that I can give away, share, help? Maybe it's my time. Maybe it's a skill set that I have. Maybe I'm a carpenter. Or maybe I'm just good at scooping snow. Maybe I'm a prayer warrior. And I spend time in prayer for my brothers and sisters. Maybe it's about relationships. Who am I willing to invite into my life to share Jesus Christ? Everything that we have in life is either a tool to be used for the good of Jesus Christ or it becomes an idol that draws us away from Jesus. Our stuff, our gifts are to be used for God. And as we begin to grow into the people God has called us to be, we must be willing to love generously. I've shared the story that when I came back from Africa, I was determined to sell all our stuff and go to the mission field. And I've told you my wife said no. I didn't realize how wise my wife was. But I did realize that God was calling us to a different life. And so we had the great moving sail. And in 17 years, we've collected a lot of stuff again. Are you ready for a moving sail? Where you let go of the things of this world to give your heart, your life, your resources for the kingdom of God. Are you willing to begin to love generously? Join us next week as we continue our journey with the Donovan family. Will you pray with me? Gracious Lord, open our hearts to what it means to love others unconditionally to give up the things of this world that draw us away from you, to help us to adjust our lives that we might be a blessing to you and a blessing to others. Lord, help us this week 
to love generously. Amen. Church, we miss you. It echoes in the sanctuary. It's a different feeling. I wish I could reach out and touch each one of you, but only by the presence of God. Pastor Michelle and I are always here. We're always available. We're always ready to stand with you, to walk with you, to visit with you, to help you in any way that we can. Pastor Michelle and I are here to love generously. May your hearts be open that Jesus may help you to love more generously. Amen.